Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. In a future where individuals and corporations rival governments in wealth and power and medical research can be weaponized, or what fate lies ahead? In a world where the corporate structure has replaced the bonds that were once shared in our human family, what will the future hold for us? The highly praised futuristic thriller The Amherst Protocol by Richard Whitney suggests one possible outcome as oligarchs wrestle for control of it all. Richard Whitney, Ph.D., a native Floridian, presently resides in Massachusetts, where his family has lived for 13 generations. He's worked in the field of mental health since graduating from the University of Massachusetts. Dr. Whitney obtained a master's degree from the University of Miami before completing his Ph.D. at Nova Southeastern University. Throughout his career, he specialized in working with children and families, which continued upon specializing in forensic psychology. His book, The Amherst Protocol, was inspired by his study of the human motivation, his understanding of human relationships, and the impact of 9-11 on his youngest clients. Richard Whitney, author of The Amherst Protocol, is with us on This Week in America. Richard, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for doing this with me. Well, this is great. I love this story, and you've done such an excellent job with this. And, you know, and reading the bio, it says you've been a practicing psychologist for the past 30 years. This is your first book. Why now? What was the motivation to, to publish this book, to tell the story? Well, in, in a, to summarize, it would be 9-11. Uh, certainly that uh, affected us all very greatly, and... Uh, I uh, watched as uh, the children had to struggle with it most of all, and uh, I began to think about what other things could be coming down the pike uh, in terms of what we've got to de deal with uh, in, in, uh, as, as we struggle to find ourselves as a human family. What is the year that the Amherst Protocol is set? What time frame are we talking about? I talked about futuristic. What time span are we looking at? Oh, well, I, I set it in 2043. Um, that's about, what, 20 years from now? A little over 20 years from now? Well, yeah. Uh, so, so it's not so distant that uh, we can all say, e okay, that, you know. Uh, I try to keep it... Uh, as an expansion of what uh, a possible future that we can relate to. Well, and it is uh, relatable as you're reading the story, the Amherst protocol, you can actually see these things happening that you're talking about there. The book itself is, is unique, somewhat unusual and some would probably say grim in the presentation you're making. Was there something that, that prompted to choose this area, this t style of writing? Uh, well, in the style of writing, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I've, uh, you know, I try to think of myself as being uh, someone who uh, would emulate Hemingway, but uh, <laughs> my friends all say I, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm too wordy for that. Um, but uh, it, in terms of the genre, I, I think uh, uh, we all look for interesting stories. Uh, stories that uh, will engage us and uh, uh, pull us in. So I try to give a human side to it, as well as reminding us that um, there are desperate people out there and the greedy people and, uh, you know, people with uh, few principles and who will uh, pretty much do anything to uh, get what they want. It's so believable. The book is The Amherst Protocol by Richard Whitney. We can see these things transpire and maybe society go in this direction. We'll talk to you in the course of the interview about uh, about where he sees society and technology in particular in, in 20 years from now. The main character in the book, Clayton Tucker, is colleagues at the Dallas Observer. You've got a, a reporter as a main character. Uh, talk about how you selected that for the main character. Uh, my my decision was fairly easy. I've always had, had uh, great admiration and respect for the uh, uh, Fifth Estate, as we, it was once called. Yes. Um, because they, 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 they keep us honest, or, or at least they used to. Um, 
one begins to wonder even now whether they can be as uh, independent as they used to be. Exactly, yes. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I think I'm trying to, uh, in the book, set up a, a, uh, the character, Clayton Tucker, as, as an independent reporter who is going to look into all the dark corners and recesses that he has to to make sure that we understand what's going on around us. Um, it keeps the, uh, you know, the fifth estate, the, 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 the uh, media has always been the check on uh, our government uh, so that we can stay informed about what our government is doing in our name. Uh, so that was why I, I basically went that way. Um, I've, always, I've always had great admiration for, for reporters. Well, and Clayton is, is a, a very interesting figure. We're talking, if you're just joining us, about the book, The Amherst Protocol by Richard Whitney. The book is available at all Amazon sites, Barn & Noble, Page Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand. No matter where you live in the world, you have access to the, the Amherst Protocol, and you will enjoy the story that Richard is telling. Some would say this is a critique of American culture, and I sort of, I guess, alluded to that, where we, we see our culture going. Talk about that aspect of, of your book, The Amherst Project. Yes, it is a critique. Um, I've watched over my career as um, there's been assault on the very bonds that hold us together as humans. Uh, our modern culture seems to drive us apart rather than bring us together, uh, not merely as groups of people within within our society, but even families. Um, in no other time, in, you know, since the 1940s it began, where families, uh, you know, grew up together and then suddenly we're miles and miles and miles apart and the uh, bonds break down and we have to wander around trying to figure out who we are and where are our places in the world and would latch on to things and occupations as defining characteristics. Uh, and I'm not sure that's the best. So that's kind of where I'm trying to, part of what I'm trying to say uh, in the book. Um, and part of what I'm trying to say is a reliance on corporate structures uh, may not always be the be best thing for us to do. Well, it's interesting, and I'm sure you see this, the culture change before your eyes in the years that you've been practicing and dealing with children in dealing with families. It's interesting. You say now we may be miles apart. If we're together, we may even be miles apart. When you look at families out waiting at a restaurant, and I know other people have made this observation, but you see them, they're all individually on their devices and nobody is communicating. I mean, it's it's out there, and we rely on the main the corporations, the big corporations for, uh, for the internet, for Facebooking, for all of those aspects of it. The book is the Amherst project uh, protocol by Richard Whitney, our guest on the program. Uh, you have some observations on race relations in the book. How do you feel they will go in? It looks like you're thinking they may not improve in the future. Went through a period where I thought they were. Now I'm, I'm not sure. Where do you see race relations going? Well, uh, that's a difficult question, Rick. Um, I was a young man when the, in the 60s and early 70s when the civil rights move, movement uh, really uh, uh, got us to where we needed to be. Yes. Uh, uh, and since then, it's been a very slow and arduous process. Um, and I, I, I don't see the advancement for uh, non-white uh, communities uh, moving as quickly as I think uh, it would behoove us to have it move because it improves us all uh, in my in my opinion uh, um, I think unfortunately as I say in the book it's going to be a matter of time uh, common interest and uh, patience that that basically it'll move forward as we are able to let go of that the old time, um, you know, if it looks like me, then it's good, and if it doesn't, then it's bad. Yes. Uh, we we still suffer with with that uh, idea, uh, and I think uh, it, you know over time, you know, we can let that go, and 
will move forward as, as that happens. Um, and and uh, I know that sounds simplistic, but, uh, you know, I, I try and think of, uh, you know, I found that human motivation, despite our, our many symbolisms and our complex ways of uh, describing things and creating all these uh, great, th- motivation is fairly simple. Um, and, and so uh, I, I think it's a lot more simple than we may think of it. Um, we just, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I know it sounds fatalistic, but I, I really think it's going to be a matter of time and common interests that will bring us together. Richard Whitney is our guest on This Week in America. The book is The Amherst Protocol. I'll mention again, basically wherever books are sold, I'll direct you to uh, pageturner.us in their bookstore, of course, available at Amazon, the usual places. In the book, you created the American Workers Party. Are, are you anti-capitalism? Someone look at that and and think that. Talk about creating that, uh, th- that labor party. Well, uh, no, no. Let me make it very clear. I'm... Uh, I'm a capitalist. I have no problem with the capitalist system. In fact, it's uh, a product of our revolution. Uh, culturally, as uh, you know, uh, it's just a natural e- evolution that we we you know uh, do our commerce that way. Uh, uh, the American Workers Party I created because the you know uh, back when I started writing this thing, uh, I began to see uh, the Democratic Party kind of falling into uh, a pattern where there were disparate parts of the party. And uh, uh, and so I, I envisioned how the Democratic Party would ultimately begin to divide and, and part of it would move away and perhaps uh, mingle with uh, disaffected Republicans who are not so far to the right. Uh, and... Uh, Managing in the process to repeal the Taft-Hartley Act from, I think it was 1948, uh, which outlawed the American Labor Party, interestingly uh, enough. Uh, how they can outlaw a political party, I'm not sure, but in any event, they did. Um, and, and so uh, they repealed Taft-Hartley, they formed the uh, American Labor Party so that the government doesn't have to take care of us. Uh, that the uh, unions, which are better regulated, and, and believe me, they define much different than they are. Uh, you know, the, we people are afraid of unions because of the, you know, the rampant greed and corruption that occurred over the uh, uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, 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 you know, uh, so that people are, are, are afraid of unions, uh, but they can be revised so that they can both work with uh, companies to improve the company and to make sure the uh, uh, people who are taking care uh, to working for that company are also taken care of. In any event, uh, the American Workers Party is just a, 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 a projection that I had from what I was seeing going on in the Democratic Party. Richard Whitney, the author of the Amherst Protocol, our guest on the program. Boy, time is going by so quickly. I mentioned one of the uh, the lead characters, Clayton Tucker, the reporter. You also have a Senator Hastings, uh, an interesting character. Talk a little bit about how you entered him into the story. Well, um, Senator Hastings uh, is the uh, uh, segue to uh, my follow-up on the Amherst product Protocol. Uh, so I, I've already kind of begun a couple of different uh, uh, pieces for uh, inclusion in a follow-up book. Uh, but Senator Hastings is the head of the American Labor Party. Uh, he's also involved with uh, um, this individual I call Father. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to Father uh, a bit more in, in the next book, but... Uh, um, that individual is uh, someone who is uh, looking out for uh, the human bond, the bonds that uh, support us emotionally, spiritually, in in the ways that family bonds used to. Uh, and so, uh, Senator Hastings is the way in which. Um, um, th- the, that those concepts 
will be introduced into our uh, our cultural, societal, and governmental norms a bit more. In the book, but again, that's for future uh, a future uh, piece. Well, and I'm looking forward to that, and uh, fans of the Amherst Protocol will be excited to hear that there will be a sequel, and we'll, we'll wrap that up again in, in a few minutes as, as the interview is over and let people know that that will be out there, and where you can get your copy, by the way, of what's out there now, the Amherst Protocol. A number of female characters in the book, they seem to be sort of in insubordinate roles. Why is that? Where do you see this whole, uh, whole situation going in the next 20, 25 years? Well, uh, you know, I, I have to say uh, I, I didn't write strong women because I'm not a woman and I'm not sure that I can project. I, I don't want I, I have to study that more and I, I'm going to have to consult with any number of, and I'm probably going to hear it from my uh, female friends for having just said that. <laughs> but in any event, I don't feel like I, I, I had enough to really create the kind of strong. I mean, I have. A couple of characters in the Amherst Protocol that I want to build up more, but um, I haven't I haven't really been able to uh, find that in me to be able to write a strong female character, um, and and you know that's 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 my failing, but you know I I, I it's something I'm looking to to find a way to do. Uh, I envision the next uh, the next next installation to have a much uh, stronger female presence um so again that 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 was just in in writing the book i wasn't ready as a writer as a person to be able to project yes without projecting my maleness into a female character richard whitney our guest in the program couple minutes left talking about his book the amherst protocol uh, talk a little bit about the view of marriage, male-female relationships that you uh, you have in, in the Amherst uh, Protocol. Some would say maybe a little bit unusual. Talk about how you develop those. The uh, marital relationship stops being a formal declaration of a contract. Uh, it's more a, 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 a declaration of a bond and a mutual uh, understanding of support uh, and uh, a connection with that person that you can put aside you will when when asked put aside your needs for that person uh, it, it's more of a, a statement of uh, uh, I'm here for you rather than I own you which much of our our marital constructs are based on that model from midi times uh, when you know the bride was presented a dowry was exchanged and the uh, woman yes. became the property of the man you know that's we we've challenged that the last 40 or 50 years and uh, we're still struggling with it uh, I, I work in a field where I see that struggle every day uh, so so uh, we still struggle with it but I'm hoping that in the next 20 years we can evolve to a point where you know we are in in a relationship as partners. There, as I said to somebody recently, uh, in discussing this with one of my uh, female colleagues, you know, I treat I try to treat women as if they're my partner in a mutual endeavor, i.e., getting through life, and and rather than you know deciding who owns who's one up in the relationship. I mean. It's always a power differential on any relationship, which you have to address at some point. But to to consciously try to eliminate in the relationship, and that's what a marriage of the kind in the book is about. As and you'll see Clayton struggling with that because he's still on the old model, and his companion Pam is familiar with the newer model. 
You know, it's interesting, and uh, I got another question here, then we're going to run out of time, and we need to do this again. There's so much we can talk about. Your real-life background in psychology gives you such insight into where we may be shifting as a society, as a culture, which gives great validity to your book, The Amherst Protocol. Uh, Montana, who is father, all of these other issues, I have a feeling... A lot of these will uh, develop in the uh, in the sequel. When do you think that will be uh, be available for us? Uh, well, uh huh. It only took me uh, ten years to write this one. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm hoping that I'm, I'm going to have the next one out within the next year or two. Okay. I mean, you know, I still have a day job I got to deal with. Well, that, yes, but these thoughts obviously on your mind. You've done such an excellent job in developing. The thesis for this book, The Amherst Protocol, it's available at all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand. A lot more information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned Page Turner. I know you've worked with them in this project. What has that relationship been like for you in working with them and helping get the message out there of the book, The Amherst Protocol? Well, uh, you know, the, I I, uh, I have to say it's been uh, been a good relationship. I mean, it's been contentious at times because I I'm a particularly uh, tedious person to work with when it comes to correcting my work. Yes. <laughs> or or uh, making sure the work, the, you know, the uh, but but uh, uh, so. That was a process, but uh, in terms of getting the word out, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that we're doing this. Uh, apparently, they're setting up a web- website just for the book, um, and uh, uh, you're telling me that it's on sale in Australia. I hadn't. I, this is the first I'm hearing See, of it. It's I'm worldwide, pleasantly surprised. and it's always interesting to get a look at the other side of writing a book. That's the creative process is one side. This whole marketing thing is a whole different venture out there, and the book's available for all those places that I listed. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Page Turner and get information on the book. It's the highly praised futuristic thriller, The Amherst Protocol, our guest Richard Whitney. Richard, a pleasure having you on the program. When you get the sequel ready, we'll have you back and talk about that as well. Excellent job with this. Thank you for being with us on the program. Well, thanks for doing this with me, Rick. I've really enjoyed this. Richard Whitney, our guest. The book is The Amherst Protocol. Books available wherever books are sold, basically around the world. You can link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.